Welcome to E-Commerce Fastlane, episode 110. Welcome to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, launch, grow, and scale a wildly successful e-commerce company. Listen to real conversations with proven practical strategies and success stories. Learn how to generate more traffic, more sales, more profit, and customer lifetime value for your Shopify store. And now, your host and e-commerce entrepreneur, Steve Hyde. This episode is brought to you by the team at Push Owl, a leader in web push notifications for Shopify brands. Are you using web push notifications yet as part of your marketing strategy? If not, you're definitely missing out. It's an important tactic that all Shopify brands, regardless of their size, should be implementing today. Thanks to an amazing Push Owl solution, web push notifications are clickable messages that show up on your desktop computer or mobile phone. And with one click, customers come back to your store ready to buy or consume your latest content. And get this, without collecting email addresses, you're able to recover abandoned carts or win back visitors that recently abandoned your store. It's the best of both worlds, shopping cart recovery and browse recovery for those visitors that didn't buy anything and didn't add anything to the cart, but they spent time viewing products on your site. Imagine being able to send push notification broadcasts to all your subscribers or a segment of them with a new collection launch or a flash sale or BFCM or holiday promotions or, you know, just engaging them with your new branded content from your blog. They even have an incredible feature where you can notify customers when a product is back in stock. Never lose shoppers when inventory gets to zero. You can now send automated back in stock web push notifications to bring those interested shoppers back to your site. And Push Owl is Shopify's leading solution for web push notifications. Over 20,000 brands trust their platform for this incredible sales channel. And right now, they're offering a 30-day free trial for all my listeners. So check them out, ecommercefastlane.com forward slash pushowl or pushowl.com and use the code Fastlane and start automating and scaling your marketing today. Hey there, it's Steve, and welcome back to the e-commerce Fastlane podcast. Now, if this is your first time listening, this is an e-commerce show where we have honest and transparent conversations about building and thriving with your store powered by Shopify or Shopify Plus. Now, new episodes are available each week with your favorite podcast player through iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify, or you can also sign up online at ecommercefastlane.com and be notified when a new show is being released. Now, my guest in today's episode is Brian Gildry, who is the partner and chief growth officer from a company called Pixels. That's P-I-X-E-L-Z dot com. And they're a photo retouching service that helps merchants boost online sales with commercial product images. Pretty exciting. Perfect timing, actually, pre-BFCM right now. They've also processed more than 50 million images for e-commerce brands, and their platform allows for you to edit retouch and remove the background from product images. So let's jump in and learn more. So hi, Brian, welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. Hey, Steve, thanks for having me. So I mentioned a tiny bit at the top of the show, uh, and I'm sure I'd love to hear it in your own words, but like on a high level, what does Pixels do and what problem are you aiming to solve for Shopify store owners? You know, we consider Pixels to be the absolute easiest way to edit, retouch and remove the background from product images for e-commerce, just like you mentioned. I think it goes without saying, we all know that you need beautiful product images to sell more online. Your imagery can also help reduce returns. The thing is, when you actually start creating product imagery at scale, it becomes a very monotonous and also time-consuming task. So what Pixels does, we're actually leveraging image editing AI that we built out ourselves to automate a lot of this work. Shopify merchants are sending us basically their unedited product images And then we deliver them back fully retouched in as little as three hours. And we're definitely freeing up a ton of important creative resources for, you know, Shopify merchants. And we also help them save up to 70% on retouching, which is a nice kicker. Yeah, very cool. And it just reminds me of a mantra, double down on your strengths and kind of outsource the rest. Uh, And this is a particular case where it seems like a significant amount of human capital can go in to having to have the best product images, both for your website and then certainly for social ads. And so I can see a huge benefit in being able to outsource this to a professional organization like yours. Yeah, exactly. I think one thing that's a little bit different about Pixels is we're not a traditional outsourcing uh, solution either. 
um, we're actually a hybrid model. So we do employ hundreds of professional retouchers that help us do work, but you know, we're, we're really combining both our own image editing AI with a massive team of expert retouchers. And it's that combination of the two, which really allows us to deliver enterprise grade product imagery to thousands and thousands of merchants on Shopify today. So tell me a bit about the journey uh, of the founders. I just, it's all interesting to me how, you know, how and why people build what they build. So are able to you know, talk about, you know, what you believe uniquely positions the founding team, I guess, to have the desire and the expertise to want to create this platform. We've been in business for almost 10 years now, believe it or not. It has been a, a whirlwind, but our founders actually used to run uh, an e-commerce agency in Denmark back in the early 2000s. They actually built their own e-com platform, so quite technical, but they also started providing a lot of core services like you know content production. Really, Pixels was, was kind of born out of uh, scratching our own itch as we also were struggling with trying to figure out content production at scale, photography at scale. Um, we knocked on the door of a lot of outsourcing vendors out there. You know, we tried temp hires, we tried doing it in-house, and really were frustrated with the solutions out there. And so Pixels really was like, hey, we, there's got to be a better way to do photo editing and retouching at scale. And so really, this is where we kind of brought our technological know-how into this industry. And yeah, we've, we've been building a platform ever since. That's cool. So why product image retouching? Like, you know, isn't there a trend of merchants kind of moving away from maybe too over-processed? Because sometimes I see user-generated content being produced and on social ads, certainly now because of the pandemic, but then on the other side, you're talking about having professional, high-quality photography. So let's kind of contrast those two. So, you know, what is the trend, right, with product imagery? I think, you know, are, are people moving away from retouching? I think that it's, it's yes and no. A lot of people think that retouching is a bad word. There's a lot of, you know, mm. bad, you know, the, there's been <laughs> stories of, of brands getting bad press around retouching. We're actually not talking about beautifying models. We're not trying, you know, we're not enhancing shape. We're not trying to make anybody look doll-like. Nobody wants to see this anymore. Everyone's really looking for a, you know, natural look and feel. Authentic, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. So in our mind and, you know, what we are really providing for our customers, retouching is about making your customers focus, right? So we are eliminating distractions on the actual products themselves. We're actually also saving stylists and photographers time in the studio where potentially, you know, maybe they don't need to spend as much time styling something out that we can actually handle a lot of things in post-production. So it's, it's really just a, a different state of mind for a lot of retailers. And I think the fact is 100% of the internet retailer 500, all the largest brands that are using us, I mean, they're all requesting retouching services. And it could be something as simple as removing dust and uh, lint and spare threads, things like that. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, some people are retouching skin or removing a tattoo, but even a lot of the anti, let's say body shape retouching brands, I won't name them, but there's several that have gotten a lot of press. They employ retouchers and are retouching product images, you know, day in, day out. So it's something about, do you really want to have a professional you know, high quality image for your site? Do you really want to make your customers focus in on the product itself, not be distracted by a, a maiden label or a stray flyaway hair or, or something that, that potentially mm -hmm. could actually, you know, that, that could be the difference between that clicking that buy button or, or moving on to something else. So that's the type of retouching that we're talking about today. I see. So let's talk about maybe selling more because I think I mean, the idea, you know, picture is worth a thousand words. And, and so I get the benefits of having great product photography and in your case, enhancing the photo and helping customers focus. So I think that's great. What kind of images do you believe merchants need to produce just in order to sell more? Great question. And I think there's a lot of content out there on how to optimize, you know, PDP pages, category pages. First off, I think it goes back to what needs to be on the PDP page. I think story is extremely important. So, you know, having the editorial imagery there. One thing that we have actually found after evaluating 50 million images is that there isn't one recipe for success, right? I, mm. I would be lying if I was saying, you know, hey, every brand needs to have, you know, six alts and a main, and you need to have a 3D spin, and you need to now have a, a model that you can, you know, show product image, your product in, in AR, things like that. We are seeing quite a few differences between brands, but I think at a minimum, you need to be investing in creating an experience, right? 
you really need to be able to give your customers the ability to do what they used to be able to do in an online store. It's you know, obviously that we're we're not shopping too much in, in retail uh, these days, but shoppers, you, you were you used to be competing with experiences where you could touch and smell and hear and try on and and even maybe taste a product before you buy it. So, what kind of imagery are you putting on your PDP pages that are giving a similar type of experience, right? And so, I think that's where really making sure that you have a comprehensive, you know, uh, set of product imagery, you're including lifestyle images. If you can add, you know, more rich media, like with spins or an AR experience, obviously fantastic. I I know that Shopify Plus has published some very interesting conversion data on uh, what, you know, the AR type of experiences are um, and, and how that's helping with conversions as well. And I've seen a lot with video too, and, and there's lots of uh, premium themes that are available in, in the Shopify uh, theme store where part of their layout and design, you know, definitely are the thumbnails, these alternate images you're talking about. So you have a primary image, these alt images, and you're right, uh, there's there's ways of turning on the AR uh, component, if that's something that you want, or certainly adding the video component uh, to see somebody walk on and walk off and spin around. Um, a very interesting opportunity out there. That's the product details page. Now, what about the other parts of the shopping experience? Are you able to talk about maybe how these sort of high quality photography and these images, why it might be important on other pages other than these PDP pages? Yeah, I mean, we definitely spend a lot of time helping merchants optimize PDP, but I think there's definitely a lot of other opportunity I think two areas come to mind, Um, notably, you know, your category pages, how, you know, and a a lot of merchants are just, you know, hey, we're obviously the the main is going to be showing up in the category page, but are you taking a look at those category pages and are you actually providing a consistent experience? So on the category page side, there's been, you know, several studies showing how highly consistent product imagery on those category pages are actually lowering bounce rates. So, you know, people are shopping longer, they're spending more time on that page. So extremely important. And, you know, I think another thing that's becoming more and more important you know, that we receive requests, you know, from hundreds of retailers on is really just color consistency across different channels. So, you know, when you are posting a lifestyle image or editorial image on Instagram, has that product that's showing up there, is it actually color matched to the same product that you're showing on your PDP page? Is it actually, you know, do your product images actually match? You know, you would be surprised, but there's often a huge disconnect between the actual color between lifestyle and product imagery. And that is just uh, right pickings for really ruining your returns and uh, driving up the return rates from merchants, right? If you're seeing a, a certain color shoe, a certain shade of brown in a lifestyle image, and you're making a buy decision on that, and then actually, you know, something comes in as a totally different shade of brown, we've seen that actually killing a lot of return rates. Just really having that in mind when you're creating different types of content, that lighting is super important, and then you know trying to make sure that everything is coming through with a consistent color through the different channels that you're using that media on. So I'm interested about apparel brands because you know they have seasonality. Obviously, they're different they're for sure. Four seasons for sure of a different apparel come in, and so just curious on the workflow of someone's listening today, obviously deal with lots of Shopify plus brands for sure in the apparel market and knowing the seasonality factor, do these brands send the product to you and is it photographed that way? Or is it the other way around where typically a brand will hire or have in-house photographer do a photo shoot and a session based on that collection of product. Um, and then with these full high resolution images, go to some kind of a Dropbox of some sort. And then do you then import those in and start your process? I'm just curious on just to understand the workflow for those listening today. We actually do not receive products. So we actually do not do our own photography. That being said, uh, we have written most of the product photography related posts on the Shopify blog. So we definitely help and coach uh, merchants on how to take the absolute best commercial photography of their products. That's something that we're proud of and you know happy to, uh, to help anybody that's in need. 
Um, but what we do is, you know, most of the customers, they do have an in-house photographer or in-house photo studio. They could also be, you know, using uh, a freelance photographer, freelance, you know, commercial photo studio as well. But mm-hmm. what we, you know, we have our a platform that's actually managing the entire retouching process, photo editing process. So basically a brand is going to set up their style guides. So, you know, Hey, this season, this is a look and feel we want for all of our product images. It's something you can create with just a few minutes on the pixels platform. And then you're going to be uploading unedited images directly to our platform. And so what, once we know, you know, we have that, we call it a specification, but once we know your style guide, exactly how you want those images retouched, We'll receive that, you know, that batch of uploaded images, and then we'll send them off into production. And then, like I mentioned before, they can be finished. We have different turnaround time options, but they can be completed in as quick as three hours. And our default Mm -hmm. delivery is actually next morning. Brian, this show really does have a diverse range of Shopify entrepreneurs that listen each week. And if you were to give some advice, because you have access to so many different merchants and brands, could you give some advice? those that are listening today that would be in the early stage of their business journey, what sort of things do you believe they should be working on today? I would ask, you know, what's your story? You know, what's your backstory of the brand? I I feel so, I'm, I'm passionate about that. I think brands in the early days, you know, investing time in creating a compelling brand story from day one and looking at your copywriting and your imagery and what kind of video you're using, like what are you doing to make your brand come alive and to stand out, right? I think, now more than ever before, content is a critical differentiator, especially now where there's you know limited offline experiences. I would want to have my brand experience front and center. What are we doing to, to differentiate ourselves from a content perspective? So once we have something to show potential customers, I think it's just where are our potential customers hanging out, right? I think distribution is so key. A lot of merchants that that I have seen, I think they spend so much time and I, I actually fallen into this trap myself, spend so much time, you know, thinking about their product and building a beautiful site and really doing a tremendous amount of work to get up to the point where they can sell. Um, and then they just don't have an audience. So really thinking about where your customers are, who is your audience and and, and taking the time to build that out up front. Yeah, I love it. Now, what about those that are listening today that would be considered in the mid-market? They're likely on Shopify Plus. They'll have a small marketing team, maybe even outsource some of that energy. But I believe they'd be definitely eager to grow and scale. From your vantage point, because you seem to deal with a lot of the larger brands, what should a mid-market brand be working on today? I think what we've seen in our experience, mid-market brands, you know, I think it's uh, when you're going into growth mode, right? You're really trying to figure out how to scale that's actually a sweet spot for our team as well at Pixels. We are working with thousands of mid-market brands to really help them optimize their online imagery. I would say, you know, first and foremost, it's um, look at your tool stack. You know, you don't need to do it all. I think that's the uh, entrepreneur syndrome is wearing a thousand <laughs> different hats. Hey, can I do it myself? Yes. I know that sounds basic, but opportunity cost, right? Flipping this back around in terms of Pixels, if you are doing any sort of post-production work in the States, we will basically save you 70% overnight by leveraging our technology and platform. So I would just say, you know, look at your tool stack. Are you really using technology to your advantage? I think there's so many amazing app partners out there and um, so many amazing services that I would really give a, a, a good look. At, and, and also, I think that's, that's you have to balance it as well, right? Because I think that you can go to the extreme where there's, there's death by apps. And mm-hmm. so it's about, hey, what is that stack that's going to serve your business? I think that's super important, not just because it's the, the latest and hottest app that you need to do it, but like, what are the core apps and services that are going to really serve your business? And so I would put a lot of focus there because I think there's a tremendous amount of time savings. Yeah, it's just, it's all about business outcomes. You're, you're right, because I, I do a lot of app audits, certainly leading into BFCM, because, you know, it could be argued that the more apps you add certainly could slow down because there's more code and things that are attached to your website and lots of pixels firing, lots of things exactly. going on versus are there some exclusive Shopify Plus features that you could turn on and not have a certain amount of apps. So yeah, I would really, that's a really good comment, people in the mid-market to say, hey, do a quick app audit and say, you know, am I truly using this app right now? And is it offering value, either improving efficiencies or is it driving revenue 
or is it, you know, is there, is there an LTV, this lifetime loyalty kind of component to it? If it fits into one of those buckets um, and it's, it's really needed, then yeah, you'd leave it. If not, probably delete it, uh, certainly through the BFCM time, just to keep the speed up of your website, which I think is super important. So one other thing to add for, for mid-market brands, specifically on the content side, I think some of the things that we see that often goes under the radar, a lot of the, let's say, more established retailers, they have very clear brand guidelines and style guides for imagery, right? They have massive teams that are investing time and resources into this. That being said, I will say, you know, don't overlook taking a couple hours of identifying the brands that are aspirational for you. You know, look at the imagery that they are creating and putting together a package of like, hey, this is really how I want to have our brand, you know, look online. This is how we want to stand out. And and actually taking the time to define that. I think if you actually define it, it makes it so much easier to start creating content at scale, you know, bring in collaborators, really like showing them what is, um, you know, what is useful or not. Even something as simple as, you know, creating a, a Pinterest board with uh, aspirational imagery for your brand, super basic, but like no one's doing it. Yeah, so yeah, I would definitely say spend the time to, to really map out like what is that brand presence that you want um, and start kind of thinking about what are the brand guidelines or what are the style guides that we want to be working with. So what does the future look like for Pixels? Are you able to share any North Star highlights? I guess for the remainder of 2020 and I guess moving into 21, any innovation planned? Like end of the day, I just want to get a feeling about how you believe you're going to continue offering value and assistance uh, to Shopify brands. You know, obviously the start of the year a little bit rocky, but we're feeling uh-huh. extremely fortunate that we're uh, so focused on e-com and it really we're in a fantastic spot right now. We feel like we have um, a lot of amazing new services that we're actually rolling out. You know, I think that one of the things that we're extremely excited about, we actually, we spun off um, another business. It's called creativeforce.io. Essentially, it's, a, it's an end-to-end content production platform for high-volume photo studios. It's something that we've been working on for a long time, and it's really based off the insight of 10 years in this industry and, and 50 million images edited. Like, again, there's a better way to do this. I think on the pixel side, you know, we have actually been building out our own image editing AI. As I mentioned, we, we have a hybrid solution. So we're actually combining that AI with, with expert retouchers. At the start of 2019, I think we were automating close to 25% of our retouching work. And we're currently around 60%. So we've seen some massive gains on the automation side. And we're definitely expecting to see more. And that's, that's super exciting for us. And the third thing, um, I know that's a lot, so sorry about that. But the third thing, we actually, we're rolling out a new flow retouching service. So again, really helping the merchants that are focused on speed, as I you know, gave a quick ex- uh, an example earlier. But this is enabling merchants to really, to, to basically do shot to site same day. So if you're operating and you're, you know, constantly adding new products to your, you know, to your website, and you need a quick turn retouching service, we're enabling a lot of the, the largest retailers to actually get a same day professionally, you know, retouched image uh, in, a, in a very quick turn. So that's something that we're, we're super excited about. Yeah, I'll make sure all of these uh, links will be in the show notes uh, just for more information on, on these sort of features. We are nearing the end of the show though for today. Um, do you have any closing comments or any takeaways that you would like to leave with our listeners today? I would like to say, I think beautiful images sell products, right? I think we all mm, yeah. we all know that it, that goes without saying, and I'm I'm a yeah. little bit biased on that front. But uh, again, going back to that brand story, I think content is king right now. It's more important than mm-hmm. ever before that everyone is is online. So, um, and, and I really just think you know investing in high quality product content is probably one of the easiest ways that you can start boosting online sales, right? And it and it and it doesn't have to be that hard, you know, if you're leveraging the right uh, tool stack here. So. Mm-hmm. So how can people learn more about Pixels, I guess, both the website and also the Pixels Shopify app? Yeah. So um, if you just, you know, over at the Shopify app store, you just um, write in Pixels, B-I-X-E-L-Z, we will pop right up. But you can also check out Pixels.com. And I mentioned that we do have a ton of resources if you're looking to improve your post-production, you know, any sort of e-commerce photography and image editing related tips. We have tons of articles over at pixels.com slash blog and several how-to guides as well, all free of charge. So feel feel free to take a look at that. 
Yeah, I'll make sure I put those also in the show notes. We did speak offline before recording today, and I understand that you would like to share an offer or two for those listening today. Great. Yeah, I'm actually excited to share a couple perks um, with your listeners here. We've actually created a new image grader service, uh, which is actually a visual content port for your listeners that's going to show them exactly how to improve the product imagery on their website and help them sell more. It's something that they can apply to. And uh, yeah, we have a team that's actually going to, to be doing a full audit and really show them how to elevate their imagery on their site. And the second bonus is if anybody would like to try out Pixel's retouching service, we're actually going to be giving all listeners one month free on our professional plan. It's a a $95 value, and it's going to basically give you access to enterprise-grade retouching, and it will let you process up to 10 images free of charge. And then the first month will also be free on top of that. Yes, that's uh, two great bonuses. So just so I understand, so there's the image grader, so like an audit of a person's website, take a yep. look at their their current images um, and see how uh, that can be improved, either do it themselves or potentially through pixels. And then the other option is is being able to take you up on this offer of uh, retouching services uh, for a full month for free. That's uh, amazing. That's correct. And so what I'll do is I'll make sure uh, that link will be in the show notes. So it'll be ecommercefastlane.com forward slash pixels. So it's P-I-X-E-L-Z. That'll forward uh, you to a landing page to get all the details on um, how you can take uh, Brian up on that offer. Well, Brian, you know, Shopify's mission really is to make commerce better for everyone. And, you know, it's clear that you and the Pixels team really are in tight alignment with wanting to help uh, Shopify brands uh, to grow and to scale. And so I just wanted to thank you for taking time to come on the show today and giving back to the Shopify ecosystem. Thank you so much. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. This episode was brought to you by Push Owl, Shopify's leading web push notifications app and the only Shopify Plus approved certified app partner in its category. Browser-based web push notifications push your retention marketing and conversion rate optimization to the next level because you can re-engage store visitors without the need of an email address. Send web push notifications right to their smartphone or desktop by just using the browser and The great thing about Push Owl is they're used by over 20,000 Shopify stores and more than 600 Shopify Plus brands. So you know their solution has the security, privacy, speed, and reliability that Shopify Plus brands come to expect. Take their platform for a spin now, 30 days for free on their paid plan. Head on over to ecommercefastlane.com forward slash Push Owl and use the code Fastlane when you activate. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you, a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, launch, grow, and scale with Shopify. Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify.